Hi, my name's Dr. Claire Baker, and in this short film, we'll look together at some of the Bright Spots programme findings in relation to care leavers' views of stigma and disability. The Bright Spots programme is a partnership between the University of Oxford and Coram Voice. One of the principles of the programme is that children and young people are experts in their own lives. Yet when we look at the official statistics, we find objective measures and professional assessments. There's very little information from children and young people themselves on how they feel they're doing. So the Bright Spots programme is there to help local authorities systematically listen to their young people about the things they say are important. The programme's created two sets of wellbeing indicators, and these are measured by the Your Life, Your Care Survey and the Your Life Beyond Care Survey. And since the programme started, we've collected over 20,000 children and young people's voices through the surveys, working alongside 60 local authorities. So I'm really excited to share some of these findings with you today in relation to those two important issues. If we started with a definition of stigma, we might say, when you're stigmatised, people make negative assumptions about you based on a specific characteristic, how you look or the group you belong to. Goffman defines stigma as an attribute that is deeply discrediting. And stigma really operates at a multi-dimensional uh, level. And people have written about three distinct but reinforcing levels. The individual or personal level, so the beliefs a person holds, the cultural level, the shared values in society, and the structural level, the policies, the laws, and the structures and organizations. And children in care and care leavers identify stigma and societal prejudice as a real significant concern in their lives. There's a long history of young people reporting their unhappiness with how they're treated by a variety of processes and individuals, both internal to the care system and beyond it. And when we look at some of that research where young people have shared how they're feeling, some of the factors associated with stigma in the care system include the stigmatizing language that is used, the use of acronyms, how things are recorded in official documents, a lack of respect for young people's privacy, telling people intimate details about children's lives without their permission, unfair or different treatment, and actions that unnecessarily identify young people as in care or as a care leaver. And other places that stigma is reported by young people includes the general population's attitudes, how children in care and young people leaving care are represented in the media, the outcome statistics we collect, and lots of the young people have written also about their experiences of school being particularly stigmatizing. The United Nations Convention on the Rights of the Child states every child has got a right to privacy and that countries should protect children's privacy, family and home life, including from unlawful attacks that may harm their reputation. In fact, the guidance on implementing the UNCRC says agencies should take appropriate measures to ensure children in alternative care are not stigmatized during or after their placement. Young people want change. They want those who work alongside them and support them and the wider society to be much more mindful of how actions and behavior can reinforce um, the stigma associated with care experience. And so turning to the findings from the Bright Spots research, we can see that about one in eight young people in care, aged 11 to 18, felt adults uh, did things which made them feel embarrassed about being in care. And children in residential care and girls were more uh, likely to report feeling embarrassed. And for care leavers, about one in 10 young people uh, felt that as a care leaver, they'd been treated worse than other young people. This meant some young people kept quiet Due to the stereotypes, I remain quiet about being a care leaver or someone that has been in care. In the research, there's lots of um, opportunity for young people to share, if they wish, um, how they're feeling. And these young people um, writing, I've had people react really negatively about me being a care leaver because they thought that meant that my family didn't like me and they didn't want me and I've been made fun of. 
from this young person saying, I'm nervous about leaving care because in our PSHE lesson on homelessness, they told us that if you're in care, you're likely to end up on the street. And it makes me worried because I don't want that. And this is a particularly uh, poignant young person writing, the sort of prejudice people have towards care leavers is ridiculous. When you move out of care, whether it's getting a job, finding a house, if you tell them you're a care leaver, they're thinking negatively unless they've been through it. Hence the reason why trying to find a house was so difficult. Everybody had these preconceived ideas that care leavers are partiers, they're criminals, you know, ridiculous things. Yeah, I'm a quiet person. I like my own company. I don't drink, I don't smoke. You couldn't have a better tenant in a sense. The research is able to look at all the different responses uh, from care leavers and the different factors um, and see what was associated with both high and low well-being. Across the responses we've had, around a quarter of care leavers actually report very high well-being and just under a third, 30%, report very low well-being. And so when we look at what's associated for those who have high or low well-being, you can see here that actually um, feeling that you are treated the better or same as other people is really important in terms of um, our well-being. Given um, how important stigma is um, in young people's lives and experiences, how much young people tell us they want to challenge stigma uh, and want things to change, it was important to see in the recent um, independent social care review uh, a national uh, discussion on um, stigma. The research from Bright Spots continues to show young people being singled out, being stereotyped and being treated differently. It's an ongoing issue. One of the recommendations in the review is to make care experience a protected characteristic. We don't know whether the government will take this idea forward. And if it does, the report from the independent care review is clear that young people must be part of the discussions. But having a protective characteristic would mean care leavers or care experienced people should not be treated less favorably or subjected to unfair advantage because of the characteristic. So it could potentially join things such as age, disability, sex, marriage, civil partnerships um, as a protected characteristic. So it'd be very important to join in those discussions and, and for young people to share their experiences and their ideas about this. If we turn now to disability and looking at the, the wider research evidence, we see that disabled children are more likely to be looked after, more likely to remain in care for longer and have a higher risk of being placed inappropriately in comparison to non-disabled children. And disabled young people can face particularly unsatisfactory transitions from children's services. The research shows a lack of planning, inadequate information, um, not um, the consultation with young people and aftercare restricted housing and employment options for some young people. Despite this, there is limited research generally on disabled care experienced young people. And in a blog written by uh, two exper experienced um, uh, colleagues, um, a blog um, called A Hidden Intersectionality around care experience and how that intersects with neurodiversity and disability. And I urge you to um, read that blog, which brings together uh, and shines a light on this experience, something that isn't always brought together, um, disabled children, um, and care experience. We've really got quite limited national data on disability. Um, it's not collected in our annual return. And that's despite the fact that the guidance is really clear that we must um, support our disabled care leavers as we would uh, support any uh, young people leaving care. All those duties apply irrespective uh, of disability. So turning to the Bright Spots findings, I think it's really stark to see that when asked in an anonymous survey, um, around a quarter of care leavers reported that they had a disability or a long-term health problem. That's much higher than young people aged 16 to 24 in the general population, it's about 14%. 
So if we have around a quarter of care leavers reporting a disability or long-term health condition, um, how are they feeling? How are they doing in terms of their well-being? So the bright spot um, findings are, are troubling because we consistently see uh, disabled care leavers reporting lower well-being, more likely to report that they are lonelier, um, less likely to have goals and plans for the future. And compared with other care leavers, uh, they're less likely to feel safe where they live, less likely to feel their accommodation is right for them. And more of them are struggling financially and fewer of them are feeling involved in their pathway planning. That's really uh, concerning. My rights are often ignored because I'm very disabled and I'm expected to fit into a system that I can't fit into. So young people who define themselves as disabled, as we saw, report lower well-being. Yet this group is really largely invisible in our, our data, but we really need to start to unpick that intersection of care experience, disability and neurodiversity to start asking questions and spending time with our care leavers to try to understand how this intersects and any additional uh, challenges and barriers um, that might arise for care experienced young people who are defining themselves as disabled or with a long-term health uh, condition. As we saw there, being a care leaver, especially with no family support, is five times harder than an average young person. It's even more harder if you suffer from a disability. So this um, film has a lot of resources uh, attached to it. Um, so I do hope you'll get the chance um, to look at some of this. You'll be unsurprised to hear that young people have been at the forefront of challenging stigma for many years. Um, the first image um, that you saw was from a national voice over 20 years ago with their campaigning. Um, this is not a suitcase. There's also uh, North Yorkshire uh, in a film uh, around changing the narrative. Hertfordshire, you can see there, their project positive all around employment and uh, addressing stigma uh, with employers. In um, the Bright Spots uh, programme, we've developed a resource bank um, with a whole range of examples from local authorities about what they've done, often in partnership with their young people um, in response to their local findings. One example in relation to stigma comes from Sheffield who responded to their findings by working um, alongside their young people was their idea, their images, their motivation, their uh, creativity to create something called the Assembly Squad. And this is um, an interactive session for schools across Sheffield um, to uh, directly address the stigma that young people uh, can face. And there's a really uh, lovely animation in there quizzes and different things. And um, if you follow the link on, um, on that slide, you would see uh, colleagues from Sheffield talking more about that work and the impact that it's having. Another resource um, in relation to disability is the Quorum, Quorum Voice Toolkit, which is all around um, transition uh, from care for disabled young people and, and the rights of young people as they are moving on and growing older. It maps out what an ideal transition should look like and then discusses some of those common barriers, some of the ways to sort out uh, problems, explaining again uh, what the law entails. Uh, so do have a look at the advocacy toolkit as well. Just um, want to uh, finish really on um, some words from uh, Shelley, a care experience consultant with Quorum Voice. In her blog, she says, I've sat in lessons and I've been called out for mandatory careers meetings from which I felt no benefit and I've tried my hardest to avoid. I've also personally felt stigmatised in situations where professionals have carelessly made assumptions about me and children and young people should be encouraged to create their own life journey. But at times I felt that I wasn't given enough credit by social workers. Clearly, adults working with care experienced young people have the best intentions. But when their words or actions make us feel stigmatized and they give off messages that they don't believe in our abilities, this makes young people feel they've already failed before they've reached the first hurdle. And so really, I think um, Shelley's uh, call to action uh, 
for us to reflect on our own practice um, and what we can do. And so accompanying the film is a reflection sheet in relation to stigma and disability with two really simple um, questions um, around what can you do? What can you do with others in your team? And what must your local authority or partners do in relation to changing any stigmatizing practice and policies that you see or that your young people tell you about? And what can you do around identifying supporting disabled care leavers? And the um, intersectional uh, blog I mentioned earlier has the additional question about how can we all become an ally to support care experience people to come to overcome these intersectional barriers uh, and stigma. So it'd be great if you could um, look at the reflection seat, revisit some of the resources in this um, film, um, discuss with your manager, discuss in your teams, um, and I hope the uh, resources and references have been useful. Thank you very much.